Do we need to rethink the law here in Ghana? Probably, probably. But I put it to you that before we rethink anything, any law at all, we need to rethink our attitude towards the law. We need to rethink our level of compliance with the law. I want to start off by sharing with you a short, oh dear, a short video, which is a bit too dark for you to see, I think. But try and focus on the white car. Now, the white car is going off the road, blazing their own trail parallel to uh, a perfectly good highway, uh, all in the name of getting ahead of traffic. And uh, he keeps going, undaunted by obstacles, until... <laughs> until he gets his just reward for doing the wrong thing. Um, I started with this because I think this epitomizes one of our problems. Now, when the, f the first time I saw it, I thought it was funny, and I laughed. And, um, but the more I watched it, the more I, I got angry, because we all recognize this guy. The video is funny because it resonates. If you live on the Spintex Road, you've seen this guy many, many times. You see him maybe every morning. And when you see him on the road, it's not funny, it's annoying. So I want you to keep this video in mind as we move on. Rethinking the law. Now, when the, the good folks from TEDx Accra approached me about speaking, I was, I was excited. I mean, it's a privilege, it's an honor to be here with you, and it's, it's a joy to be here today. And then, and then they told me what my topic was. And the exuberance gave way to a little bit of anxiety. The exuberance gave way to a little bit of anxiety, and I was surprised. I was wondering why I would, fe I would be feeling that way, because I'm a lawyer, after all, and I'm not just a lawyer, I'm a geek lawyer. I'm the sort of lawyer who loves the, the law, lives and breathes it, and has legal discussions about rethinking the law for fun. And so I was surprised, and I'll come back to why I think it was that I had this sinking feeling. So, rethinking the law. Thank you. What is it to rethink? To rethink means to reassess, to reevaluate, to reconsider something for the purpose of improving the status quo. So, what's the law? In its, no. in its broadest sense, the law is the set of rules that we as a society have put together to ensure order, to ensure peace, to ensure security, to ensure that all of us are protected, especially the, the weaker members of society. The law, quite like the wonderful overpass behind me, are the set of rules that allow each and every one of us the freedom to go about our many different ways at the same time and in the same place without there being chaos. So what does it mean to rethink the law? Nope. What does it mean to rethink the law? It means to reconsider this complex set of rules that keep us together, that govern the social contract that we all have with each other. It means taking a look and reconsidering the engineering of this very complex, complex overpass that I have behind me. Now, before you can rethink anything, you need to have a sense of what is the status quo. So what do our laws look like now? Well, as it turns out, we have about 900 laws on the books. And every year, we pass about 10 or 20 in an effort to fill the gaps and to, and to modernize the laws. Our laws are comprised of statutory law, legislative instruments, judge-made law, common law, customary law from our traditional rules, administrative laws, regulatory agencies making laws, 
And our laws govern all aspects of our lives, from the most intimate relationships, marriage, to how we raise our children, to how we treat our environment, how we build our homes, how we treat each other, what behaviors are permitted, when and, and how. And so, how are these laws doing? How are the laws doing? Do they suit us? Now, I'm sure most of you have strong opinions about whether or how the law is doing. Well, as a legal practitioner, I'm here to tell you that as much as we like to complain, basically our laws, our laws are working. Our laws are working. Now, in a 2015 study by the World Justice Report, um, they found, they surveyed 102 countries looking at the rule of law. And they found that Ghana fared pretty well. Out of 102 countries, Ghana came 34th. Now, I was surprised when I saw this. I was surprised that Ghana did so well. And when you looked at Ghana's performance in each category that they, they considered, they considered things like civil justice, criminal justice, regulatory enforcement. When you looked at each category, Ghana fared pretty well also. Ghana was only four spots behind Italy. Ghana was second in sub-Saharan Africa. Now, they gave each country a score out of 10. And Ghana got six. Not bad. And this compares with Denmark, the number one ranking country, that got 8.7. So, by and large, we have a system. Does it fit as well as Idris Elba's suit? Probably not. But is it as ill-fitted as Chris Brown's suit? I think not. Do we have a Bentley of a system? Definitely not. But I think we can safely say that we have a system that's something like a Corolla or a Chevy. You know, it's utilitarian. It'll get you from A to B. It'll take the kids to school and bring you home from work. Is it a high-performance vehicle? No. But it gets the job done. So, if the system is basically working, it's not fundamentally broken, why then do a lot of us have this sense that sometimes we are bordering on chaos? Is it that too many of us are behaving like the driver of the car in the video? Is it that too many of us are parking in the no parking zones? Too many of us are avoiding taxes. Too many of us are building illegal bypass roads to avoid traffic, and then justifying our behavior to ourselves by saying things like, well, I'm just one person, and uh, even if I didn't do it, uh, everybody else would be doing it, and so, you know, I can't possibly make an impact. But what's really going on? What's really going on? Is it that we are a lawless society? I don't think so. I think the answer is more nuanced than that. Now, when I, um, I used to live in America for a good part of my life, and when I came back to Ghana 14 years ago, I noticed something that I thought was pretty interesting. I noticed that people had a different relationship with the law, and that the state was not the same reference point to Ghanaians as to Americans. So in America, most Americans are Americans first, and then Minnesotans or New Jerseyans or whatever else second. And a lot of Americans take every opportunity to demonstrate their civic pride, to demonstrate their pride in being a good American. In Ghana, what I noticed was that it's not that we don't have national pride, we do. You, anyone who's been to a Ghana-Nigeria football match will know, and will have seen a fantastic demonstration of national pride. But when it comes to our internal operations, when it comes to interactions amongst ourselves, we're very focused on which group do you belong to? Which religion do you practice? Which family do you belong to? And these are the institutions that people really feel a connection to. These are the institutions whose rules we are very happy to obey. 
We're very happy to tithe. We're very happy to tithe without asking the church, what have you done for me lately? But when it comes to paying taxes, when it comes to paying taxes, well, I don't like the state of the roads, so I'm not, I don't really see why I should pay my taxes. We're very happy to listen to the dictates of a chief, even if we perceive him to be corrupt. But we're not so quick to listen to what a policeman is going to tell us. So, where are we going? Where are we going and why? Why are we on this path? Why do we have this seemingly more tenuous connection with the state and antipathy towards the rules that the state uh, lays down? Some of it could be a function of our history. We inherited the state. We inherited the state. It didn't naturally evolve from our traditional system of government. But we inherited it over 50 years ago. And for better or for worse, it is the state that we have. There is no going back to our traditional system of government. And so, the state that we have is the only thing standing between us and chaos. And so it's in, it's in our collective interests to protect it, to ensure its sustainability. We all keep waiting for somebody else to make the change. I want to see the government improve, and then I will comply. And there's the rub. Because if each one of us keeps saying, keeps waiting for the change to come from without, we will never come out of that vicious circle. Not in our lifetimes, and not in our children's lifetimes, because we will pass on our same attitude to our children. And so, this brings me to the point about why I may have had that sinking feeling. I think I, deep down I, I realized that what I was coming to talk to you about was personal responsibility. And personal responsibility is not fashionable. It's not sexy, people don't want to hear it, but it's necessary, it's necessary. And so, I'm not here, I'm not here to talk to you about morality. I'm not here to talk to you about morality. I'm here to encourage you to rethink your attitude towards the law, because quite literally, if we all keep behaving like the driver who chose to drive on the side of the road, we will all quite literally drive ourselves into a ditch, just as he did. If we really want to see change, each and every one of us has to commit to change ourselves. The bad news is that we are all part of the problem. The good news is that we all have an opportunity to be part of the solution. And so, I encourage you all, each and every one of us, from the most influential to the average Joe, to dig deep and really rethink your own attitude towards the law and towards compliance. Thank you.